Hello, and welcome to my channel. My name is Tony Coleman, and today I'm going to show you how to spoof the number of CPU threads that the Boink Manager claims whenever it reports to servers and such. Here I've got a virtual machine. I've set it up to only have one virtual CPU thread. You can see that right here where it says virtual processors. One virtual machine, yes. Sockets one, so it's only got one thread acting like it's a single core. Here, I've already attached projects. In this case, I will allow new tasks. And I've got my cache set to zero extra. So once it communicates with WCG, it should only download the one work unit and start processing. Here you can see that it's downloading. I'm going to change it so that it runs always, so that it's not suspended. And now it's running the one work unit. The only reason I'm showing you this is because I want to see, show you that it is actually only reporting one CPU thread, and therefore it's only going to download the one work unit. So next, I'm going to close out of the browser. And what I'm going to go is to the program data folder, which is on, on your C drive typically. It's usually a hidden folder, so you would need to show hidden folders by going to view and checkboxing it right there. In the program data folder, you go down boink. And here you will want to create a file called cc underscore config.xml. I recommend doing this using Notepad because other editor programs don't always work properly. Sometimes it has some formatting that you cannot see with your eye, but it still exists. And Notepad is one of the better ones for making these adjustments. Now I've already got a config file that I've got multiple options set in. I'm just going to copy and paste it in here. But I'll explain what they do. So you normally start with the brackets, the CC config, your options. I tell my clients to start with a delay of 30 seconds because that gives me time to be able to stop Boink Manager or exit out of it if I need to make changes before it starts uh, populating work. This is important if you ever uh, over provision your client because it can bring your system to a complete halt if you've got it misconfigured. Here I've got it set to use all GPUs, but in this case it's a virtual machine, so that line is not important because there's no GPUs to interact with. I have it set to report my results immediately as soon as they complete. I have turned on HTTP 1.0 because sometimes some networks have problems communicating, and if you set this flag, sometimes it has a little better time. But the flag that we're looking at today is this one right here. It's the NCPUs. The N you want to change to whatever number of CPU threads or cores you want Boink to claim that you have. In this case, I could set it to 10. And then, of course, you want your closing flags at the end of it. Now, you want to go to File, Save As. C drive, program data, boink, and it's in this folder here. You want to do this drop down box, select all files because we do not want this to be a text file. We want it to be an XML. And we would name it cc underscore config dot xml. You save it, you can close out, you can see it saved in here. When we launch Point Manager, it will go ahead and read that CC config file again. It will reconnect to the host. It's now got its 30 second delay, so for the next 30 seconds you'll see it's suspended starting up. While it's doing that, we can look at the event log. 
And here you can see Point says your processor is 10 genuine Intel. Basically, that means 10 threads instead of the one. It also says config simulate 10 CPUs. Start running. So if I go back to World Community Grid, hit update. Project requested delay. That's just because I've uh, talked to it a little too early. I've also set in my options to only use 1% of the CPUs. Now I can change that to 100, and you should see it try to start up 10 additional work units as soon as it's ready to pull more work from World Community Grid. I also recommend when you're testing this feature to change your preferences to also suspend when computer is in use. However, I'm not doing that for the video because I don't want it to stop. You can also always go to your activity and change it to suspend if you ever need to, to stop it. Here I'm going to pause the video until it's ready to communicate with World Community Grid again so that you're not sitting here waiting for a couple of minutes. Okay, now you can see that the project has communicated again. You can see that it said number of usable CPUs changed from 1 to 10. It's downloaded additional work units and it's acting as if it has 10 CPU threads. Now, unfortunately, this also means it's going to complete in 10 times a mile of the time because it's going to be sharing that one CPU thread amongst all 10 of those work units. That's all there is to it. Um, there are multiple reasons why you would want to do this. Um, usually, it's if you are supporting a project that has an extreme limitation on the number of work units it sends at a time, you may want to use this as a way to cache additional work units. Uh, you can control how many run at a time by creating an app config file. Uh, that will be a tutorial at a different time. Um, you may also want to do this if you are going to be away from a project for a while, such as your computer won't have network connectivity, or maybe there's some maintenance coming up and you want to make sure you have enough work downloaded to get you through that time frame. This will allow you to basically override the server-side restrictions where they limit you to only so many work units per CPU thread that's active at any given moment. By doing this, you can actually set it to having like 80 threads, even though it only has one, and then that would allow you to download 80 times the amount of work that the project would normally send your system. So if you have any questions or um, need additional assistance, feel free to reach out to myself or any of the members of my team, which is Hard OCP. You can find us at https colon two forward slashes w, uh, hardforum.com forward slash forums forward slash distributed dash computing dot 32 forward slash. And that's where most of us hang out. I want to thank you for watching the video. And if you enjoyed it or found it to be helpful, please click subscribe and share. It costs nothing to do, but it does help content providers like myself a great deal. So until next time, have a good one.